There was a small demonstration outside an RAF base in Suffolk today in protest at the fact that American aircraft landed there en route to Israel with supplies for the military there. The protesters want the British government to demand an immediate ceasefire, which the government has conspicuously failed to do. But in one respect at least, the government has been forced to revise its position. The flights which went to the RAF base had been diverted there because, Newsnight has learned, they weren't allowed to land in Scotland. Peter Marshall tells us why. At Glasgow Prestwick, they staged their protest yesterday against the airport being used to carry weapons to the war. Those weapons that today have been responsible for killing 40 innocent people in a shelter in the Lebanon, half of them children. Would you agree that's why we're here? But it wasn't just those protests that saw at least two flights diverted from Prestwick at the weekend. Newsnight to learn that within Tony Blair's cabinet, Saturday was a day of deep anxiety over this entire issue. The Scottish Secretary, Douglas Alexander, in a telephone conversation, made it quite clear to Margaret Beckett, the Foreign Secretary, that he didn't want the political fallout from these planes going through Scotland. Des Brown, the Defence Secretary, then stepped into the breach and offered up, as a last resort transit point, military bases in England. Now, this may be seen as significant. At a point where the government could have said no to being used as a conduit for weapons to Israel, they instead said yes and offered what some will view as logistical support, military airfields. So RAF Mildenhall in Suffolk, a long-standing American base, was used for two of the cargo planes yesterday, and there it is on the tarmac. But we understand that RAF Bryce Norton, not normally used by the US, also took a plane carrying what's termed hazardous cargo, that is, big bombs en route to Israel. In my view, we are partisan in this conflict when we are allowing a British airport uh, so to be used for logistics for uh, Israel. And uh, we are not honest brokers anymore. And our policy uh, towards Lebanon is, uh, is, is biased. And I think we have severely damaged our uh, reputation in the international community. In all, Newsnight sources suggest at least six planes carrying materiel for the Israeli war effort went through Britain at the weekend. Three of them were carrying munitions, bombs, weapons and ammunition, and three others had what's called military-associated equipment on board. Military-associated equipment includes guidance tails. They're the fins fitted to bombs to guide and steer them to their targets. At Mildenhall Air Base today, there were further protests against the supply flights. More planes carrying weapons from America to Israel are expected to pass through Britain in the coming days. Peter Marshall, well, we did ask all the government departments involved to give us a statement, but they all declined. It's clear, though, that the unease within the Cabinet about this conflict goes wider and deeper than the landing schedule at Prestwick Airport. Yesterday it emerged that the former Foreign Secretary Jack Straw felt the Israeli response had been disproportionate. Until now, Tony Blair has been steadfast in his refusal to accept that there'd be any merit in an immediate ceasefire. But the sight of the carnage caused by Israeli planes in Kana yesterday appears to have forced Tony Blair to change his mind. Compare the Prime Minister speaking at his last Prime Minister's questions 12 days ago with his words of yesterday. I mean, if what the Right Honourable Gentleman is, is seriously saying to me is that I should call for an unconditional ceasefire by Israel now, if... I should call for both sides to do it, yes. Well, can I just point out to him that our influence with Hezbollah has been somewhat limited. It is not going to be possible. I think there is a basis for an agreement that would allow us to get a UN resolution. But we have to get this now. We have to speed this entire process up, get a resolution now, and on the passing and agreement of that resolution, then the hostilities have got to stop, and stop on all sides. Our let's go to Martha Carney's here now. Um, clearly there has been a change of position, hasn't there? Absolutely. The language has got much stronger over the past few days. And what the government is saying is that in Rome, they didn't go along with the idea of immediate ceasefire because they'd been told by Condoleezza Rice there would be an agreement and UN Security Council resolution by tomorrow. So why jeopardise the possibility of that by antagonising Israel? And not going for a call for a ceasefire 
cause political difficulties. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned Jack Straw, but I think the reason why that's difficult for Tony Blair is that it reflects much more widespread uh, dissatisfaction with the government's position, both in the wider parliamentary Labour Party and indeed in the Cabinet. The last Cabinet meeting was uh, 11 days ago. Then they were given the argument that there wouldn't be strong words publicly because they wanted to exercise influence behind the scenes. Now, one Cabinet Minister I was speaking to said, what influence? There's been a catastrophic lack of influence. The political perception is awful. It looks like we're turning a blind eye to decay and destruction. So pretty strong stuff. What is the government expecting will happen over the next few days? They're pretty pessimistic, actually. I think the feeling was that despite Canna, things were on track for an agreement sometime this week. But in the past five or six hours, the situation has changed and they now fear there may not even be a UN Security Council meeting um, this week that could be pushed on even till next week. Why the delay? Well, this is very interesting. The view in government, and they would say elsewhere in the international community, is that it's the French who are delaying things. Now, the reason for this is that the French, as Mark Urban was saying earlier, will form the basis of the multinational force. Now, I think the British government understand French anxiety about the fact that they putting their troops potentially into a very difficult situation, perhaps without a clear mandate. But I think there is a real sense of frustration that the French, on the one hand, are calling for an immediate ceasefire, but yet, apparently, are delaying things um, behind the scenes. And they were pulled out of the, uh, the important meeting this afternoon. And the real fear is that could end up with a ceasefire being not in a, as a matter of days, but a matter of weeks. Arthur, thank you.